morning shade tree kids i'm so glad that you're here i hope you've had a really really good week with your family our affirmation for this week is new because we're starting a new unit it is my heart is open to the wisdom and teachings of this world which is a really good way to kick off the summer so our lesson today is on hinduism which i'll tell you more about in our story so our story is called krishna's offer in northern India, spread out beneath the tall, rugged Himalayan mountains, two armies were preparing for battle. On one side were the Arjuna and his four brothers who were all brave and righteous warriors. They fought to gain back the kingdom that was taken from them unfairly. Their army was very small and it didn't seem like they had much of a chance to win against the legions that were on the other side. The Duridana led the opposing army and had 99 brothers all with many soldiers willing to fight. The Duridana had used tricks and treachery to take the kingdom away from his cousins, and he was determined to keep it. As Arjuna and Duridana prepared to fight for the right to rule the kingdom, their thoughts turned to Krishna. Everyone was choosing which side to fight on, and Krishna had not yet made a choice. Krishna also had a strong army of his own, and whoever had Krishna had his army on their side, they would certainly be likely to win any battle. The Duridana had decided he would go see Krishna in person. He would not trust a messenger to take care of such an important mission. So he hitched his fastest horses to his best chariot and rode to Krishna's palace. Arjuna also hurried to Krishna's palace at the same time his sneaky cousin did. Duridana arrived at the palace first and was shown into Krishna's inner chamber. Krishna was in bed, asleep. The Duridana knew it would be wrong to disturb Krishna's sleep, but he boldly walked in and chose to sit in a beautifully carved chair close to Krishna's bed. Just a few moments later, Arjuna was shown into the room. He spied Duridana sitting near Krishna's head, but he didn't say anything as he moved carefully to the foot of the bed and remained standing respectfully, gazing at the sleeping Krishna with devotion. After a time, Krishna stretched and woke up. As he opened his eyes, he immediately saw Arjuna standing at the foot of the bed and Krishna smiled warmly. He then turned his head and noticed Duna there and also greeted him with a smile. Welcome, Arjuna. Welcome, Duna. What brings you here to see me? Krishna asked, although he had already guessed the reason for the visit. Duna spoke quickly, his words coming out in a rush. War will break out between us very soon and you must support me. Although I know you love us both, I was here first, and so you should choose me, and that is our tradition. Join me in the battle to come. Krishna nodded in agreement, but then answered thoughtfully, But when I awoke, I saw Arjuna first, and then you second, so it seems I should help both of you. I will make an offer, and because he is younger than you, Arjuna will have the opportunity to answer first. It is also tradition that when given favors, the youngest gets the first choice. Arjuna knew this was true and couldn't argue. He forced himself to remain silent while Krishna explained the offer. But Duna grippled the arms of the chair with fierce tension and held his breath as he waited. To one side, I will give my army to command. They are strong warriors who will give their complete loyalty and fight tirelessly with great skill. The other side will have me alone without a single weapon and I will not do any fighting. Think carefully, Arjuna. Which do you think you will choose? So the room was silent. To Duna, that second of silence was filled with wild anxiety. Arjuna certainly would choose to have Krishna's army. It would be crazy not to. And then he and his brothers would only have Krishna. Krishna's presence would be nice, but Duna was more interested in victory. How would he explain his brothers that they had to go and fight against Krishna's undefeated army? Krishna could read the hearts of both men. Duna's anxiety was clear to him as Arjuna's strong determination and Krishna's love for both of them was unchanged. The moment of silence was actually just long enough for Arjuna to take the breath and form the words, I choose you, Lord Krishna, even if you carry no weapon. Duna breathed at last and he couldn't believe his luck. Arjuna was a fool. He accepted Krishna's offer of the army with obvious joy and raced his chariot away from the palace to carry the news back to his brothers. When they were alone, Krishna asked Arjuna, why did you choose me over a mighty army? Arjuna answered with a deep feeling, I've always wanted to be like you. My heart wants nothing else. I wish for you to drive my chariot and be with me always. With you by my side, victory is assured. So the end of the story is that Arjuna's army was victorious in the battle. So he won in the end. The three questions are, do you think Arjuna's choice was foolish? Why or why not? Have you seen a picture of a chariot? Do you know of other cultures besides India where chariots were once used in battles? The Egyptian culture also used those as well. 
Have you heard the custom of letting the youngest choose first? Does that ever happen to you when you play family games? We do that sometimes in our house. Okay, friends, I hope you talk about this with the adults around you and talk about more about Hinduism and what you can learn. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to be victorious. We pray you will be with us and help us to know how we are one with all. Amen. Okay, friends, see you next time.